Hi, I'm Susan Dubois, owner of Treenway Silks, and today we're going to talk about silk hankies. Now, these are not handkerchiefs, but these are silk hankies. Each one is made from one silk cocoon. All silk starts like this. It's a cocoon, and the little guy starts inside, and he winds it uh, continuously for a mile long of filament. In order to make a silk hanky, simplistically, this cocoon gets soaked into water with a couple of things added to it, like an olive oil type item. And then after it soaks, you then start to stretch it. This has been, a, in essence, a tangled up ball of thread. And so as you stretch it, it becomes open and mesh-like. They stretch one hanky. So this is what it looks like, a bunch of them, when they've been stretched. And they have a little board with holes with nails on it that go here, 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 and as they stretch it, then they put it onto that board. And then they do the next one on top of it, and the next one on top of it. So in the end, you end up with a big stack of hankies. Now, these hankies are going to come folded in your package. So when you take them out of the package, you'll open them up and lay them out flat. Now, this is 25 grams of hankies. I think of each hanky being about a half gram. Really kind of hard to say, they vary, but it's about a half gram. So you're going to have ballparky about 50 individual hankies if you really separate them. So the first separation that you'll do is you'll notice there's kind of like natural clumps of hankies. So pull off one of those clumps. And now this is still about five or six hankies. We're going to separate these to be a single hanky so you can see how wonderfully transparent they can be. So I'm wearing a glove because hankies will grab any small nick that you have on your hands. So even though I've used some preparation on my hands before I get started, I have found that having a glove on one hand and not on the other makes it a little bit easier for me to work. So now come in close and we're going to look at the selvage edges. So you can see how they want to sort of pull apart here. So there would be one. There's another one and another. You can see they're all kind of stacked up here. If it's too difficult to tell which one is an individual one versus a meshed one, then just go to another corner and see what happens. Because this is a ball that has been uh, stretched out onto these nails, the edges are going to be in parallel, and so they're going to have like a little selvage edge to them. So now that we have pulled off the start of one, the next thing I find is if I lay it on the table so I can use one hand to kind of gently pull at it, this is a step that just requires some patience. We're always excited to get started on our piece. And as it turns out, this one was actually curled over from the back. So we're going to start again with the next layer. Could you see how I could tell that it was coming over the edges of it? And so I started with the next one. So now I definitely have the top one here because it wants to peel off fairly readily. So, and see, and my fingers will grab onto that hanky because I do not have perfectly groomed hands. I am in the dye pot too much for that. So now this hanky I'm going to lay down on this colored fabric so you can get a good look at this and see how places are almost invisible. It's really like a cobweb. There's some, going to be some places that will be thick, but you can definitely see this edge, which is the selvage edge. And sometimes you can even actually see the little holes that it when it went over the frame with the nails in it. So there's one hanky, and then you just continue the process to separate and do another. And this is how you get to one hanky. You may find that one hanky is too little, too thin for what it is that you're wanting to use, and you may want to have two or three. They're entirely uh, flexible. Uh, you can do as many or as few as you want, but you'll see if you hurry, like I just did, then the little filament, which you may not be able to see, is grabbing onto each other. And then this one is two hankies, so you can see it's a little thicker. 
Now that you have these hankies, what can you do with them? Oh my gosh, the possibilities are just amazing and endless. Um, if you want to use them as a grouplet and keep it um, uh, 3D, then you can do something like this. This is a multimedia piece by Karen Bennett, and this grouping in here are silk hankies. She took a bunch and just clumped them together, tacked them on here, and here, and here to hold them into place, but then they give a nice, wonderful 3D effect to everything. Or, as we separated out the hankies, and this one is like two layers or so, you could do three layers. You can lay your hanky down. This is a beautiful piece by Ruth Chandler. Just absolutely one of my favorites. This piece through here are a couple layers of hankies that have been laid down and it's secured to the fabric by doing all of this rice stitching, also done with silk thread. And then for a little 3D effect up here, there's throwsters in here, which is a different type of silk that we'll talk at another time. But the base of it here is actually a hanky to give some like base to the nest before the threads are added on. And another way to use them kind of loosely is here. This is a beautiful piece by Liz Kettle. And if you're curious about the technique on how she made this piece, this book, Threads, which is co-authored by Debbie and Liz Kettle, Debbie Bales, Bates, and Liz Kettle, on page 118 is a piece that Liz did using similar techniques as what is in our beautiful green piece. And then there's great step-by-step -step photography on how to do it. This book is published by Landauer Publishing. So on this piece that has all kinds of different types of silk in it, this background area here, which is the loose uh, green, is dyed silk hankies that have been stretched and laid down to position the way she wanted to and then has that wonderful hand stitching uh, on top of it. Now another technique that you can do, uh, which we don't have demonstrated anywhere here, is take this single layer of hanky and then gently put your finger into the middle of it. And for this I'm going to be risky, but I'm going to take my glove off. I think I'll do it a little bit better. So you put your finger inside, and you just gently start to pull. And again, you need uh, this is the hanky is made up of a continuous, unbroken strand of silk that had been wound into the cocoon. So you want to go gently so you don't go breaking those. But basically, you can stretch this. And then when your hands get too far apart, you can take an area and then just keep stretching it. You can stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, stretch it. Here, I'll put it on the table so you can see how all of these threads are now in parallel. So you can keep stretching. And then if you're a spinner, this is perfect to then spin onto a drop spindle. Or if you're a hand stitcher, you can take this and when you reach a point, you can actually pull hard enough to separate it so that you now have a length. See my hands like to grab onto that silk. And then from here, you can do a little hand twisting yourself to kind of hold it together. Or you can leave it loose, put it on your fabric, and then couch over it so that you can have thick areas and thin areas and create beautiful and wonderful waves. And you can just keep stretching this out and get really, I've only pulled it for a little bit, but you can pull this out and get two, three yards worth of silk. And this is just one hanky. Now I've got the colored hanky. I'm going to put my glove back on here because you can see that hanky wants to keep grabbing on to me. The curse of having rough hands, but there's work around, so we make it work. So, there we go. Okay. So we also, these have been the undyed hankies. We also have uh, hankies that we have dyed. 
And I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate the same idea with these because once they've been wet and moved around, they kind of can misbehave a little bit more and be a little bit messier group. So I want you to know that the same practice of gently pulling one off will still work. So I'm going to pick this up and again, you can still see that wonderful selvage edge going along. So I'm going to kind of start and say, yep, here is my selvage edge. I find on the, on the table helps better, goes a little more smoothly. And then I'm going to very carefully lift this hanky. Oh, don't you like those long pregnant pauses between the words? And then set it over here. Now this little guy kind of moved around and lost some of its shape, but you can still see right here, you can still see that selvage edge and the shine to it. And you can then reposition it to put it back into a square, or you can say, I don't want to work with it on a square. Let's go ahead and do something 3D with it. Look how light and fluffy this is. So many possibilities for what it is that you want to do. I mean, that is just gorgeous. Can you imagine a bouquet of flowers and then having these as some of the centers of the flowers to help give some wonderful dimension? And then another thing, oh, this book, when we were looking at Ruth's beautiful piece, uh, the indigo piece, uh, Ruth wrote this book. This is a fabulous book, and this is my go-to book for hand stitching when I want to do really simple, wonderful things. It's called Modern Hand Stitching by Ruth Chandler. This cover piece is actually using silk from our, uh, our silk pieces, and this area right in here was a hanky that was laid down and stitched on. What Ruth does in this book, also by Landauer Publishing, is she shows how a simple stitch done repetitively, like she did with the rice stitch, can really be, be beautiful and attractive, and you don't have to know a lot of really complicated stitches to do something very beautiful and effective. So I really uh, like this book. It's a fabulous book. Highly recommend you seeking out your local bookstore to find it. Now, you've seen some of our Silk Fusion demos. And so Silk Fusion is made with a screen, and what the way we've demoed it all along has been used the Silk Roving to lay that out. So go look at those Silk Fusion demos if you haven't seen them yet. So, but you can also use a hanky. A hanky has been used here, this beautiful purse that Tamara Leberer did. It's Silk Roving all through here, but see how this shape is different and it's got more of a matte finish on this flower? This is a Silk Hanky. So she made the, uh, her fusion, fusion, and then she just took a piece of the hanky and kind of wadded it and laid it down. Using, now this particular piece, see those hankies want to grab everything. This particular piece, you can't actually see the selvage on it. But other pieces, this is just a little demo piece that I did with uh, stretching a hanky out to show how it can be. Here you can clearly see the selvage going all the way around the hanky. Uh, and so when you're creating your silk fusion pieces, you can use that selvage to then define, oh, this is going to be a mountain or this is going to be a lake. And so you've got that sharp edge uh, from the selvage, which will have more sheen to it because the threads are in parallel. And then this particular piece, oh gosh, one of my total favorites. Liz Kettle did this one also. And what's really cool about it is the center area, which is going to be on our talk with silk rods. But this green back along here, that was a piece of fusion made with strictly with a silk hanky. So on that one, she would have taken the hanky, stretched it out onto the silk, and then since it was a dyed one, and you can layer these up so that you get little bits going through. And then put the screen on it, wet it, apply the textile medium just like you do with a regular piece of Silk Fusion. If you're going to be using the hanky, you'll either want to use a nylon screen that's really smooth or use a um, tool, T-U-L-L-E because that's going to be a fine net that will release from this hanky much more easily than a fiberglass screen. So now that you know how to separate your hankies, 
You can use them natural, you can use them dyed, you can stitch with them, you can do silk fusion with them, and that's just the beginnings of the ideas of what you can play with hankies. So good luck and have fun. Let me know what it is that you make. Thank you.